Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's session on the Book of Psalms. Before we could start, I would request one of us to please lead us in prayer. Can I request Jeffina to start our class with a word of prayer? Jeffina? Yes, I'm here. Yes. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you under the name of Jesus. We thank you for this beautiful day and for the beautiful section that we have had and we are about to have right now. I welcome the Holy Spirit and your presence and your knowledge and your wisdom to fill us as we listen to this class, as we read about Psalms. Let everything that we learn be pasted in our heart and let us apply it in our life and enjoy every second with you. I pray that you fill our man with wisdom and everyone who is listening to this class with the understanding of your heart. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. So today we're going to study on a very interesting book and it's also one of my favorite books. That is the Psalms, the book of Psalms, which is one of the biggest book in the Bible. I'm sure Psalms would have been uh, the favorite book of many of us, isn't it? So uh, can you please tell me like how often would we would have read this book of Psalms? How often we would have read this book of Psalms? Yes, sir. Most days. Yes, John, sorry. Most days, I think. Most of the days. Okay, okay, okay. Sid, how about you? Ma'am, the book of Psalms is like a it is like a regular meditation. Whenever we are asked to read Bible or somebody we if we are going out, it is a habit to read Bible. Suddenly it is in the middle of the it is in the middle of the Bible, so directly the fingers goes in the Psalms and we have to read it. Okay. Like we love to read it actually. Yeah, so is it something like it's middle of your Bible? Do you just tend to open whichever Psalms you get, we read it, or how is it? How is it said? Ma'am, like for whatever the person, if you are going, to, if you need any, like you need to know, there is a psalm for each and every purpose. Like if you are in distress, there is a psalm. If you are happy, you should celebrate, there is a psalm. For marriage, there is a psalm. If somebody is sick in your family, there is a psalm. So psalms 91 talks about like how God will protect your angels, will guide them. So for in my life, the book of Psalms has blessed me. And I, I believe that if you are going through each and every problem, the God has a specific psalm that God will talk to you through this psalm. Beautiful, beautiful. Thanks Sid, for sharing that. That's right. Okay. Uh, yes, Divya, you would like to share something? Uh, uh, yes, uh, I was just telling like it is a favorite portion during personal worship as well as family time. Yeah, I don't remember like how many times, um, especially growing up as a kid, you know, in our um, family time, a prayer time, we used to just go around from 1 to 150 <laughs> sounds, just, um, yeah, uh, like a cycle. Yeah. Yes, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Jeffina, you would like to share? Mm, yes. So, Sam, uh, I used to read it every day, like, uh, mm -hmm. even though I read all the other passages of the mm -hmm. Bible. I end it always with Psalm. I read a Psalm and then I end my Bible. So, so how has been your reading. experience reading Psalms? I think Did Psalm that speak to your circumstance or situation, anything that you had been facing and it has ministered to you personally? I think every day I read Psalm and every time I learn something new from it, uh, even though sometimes I read the same passage, but something new is revealed. And Psalm is something that gives peace to our heart, I think, because it's all about praise and all about thinking of how God is. So it always feels good to end it with Psalm. <laughs> That's beautiful, Jeffina. That's something nice that you pointed out is, yes, when you read there's always something new that we could get to learn from the scripture. Yes, along with the other scriptures, we do tend to read some because that brings a kind of joy or peace or comfort, depending on the situation that we would be going through or facing it. That's beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing it. And yeah, Georgia, uh, 
others you would like to share? Zeli, Enoch, Enoch is not there. Okay. Nikki, Roslyn, just share your views. Uh, how Psalms has ministered you personally? Yes, we have lots to share. I've decided I'm not going to finish Psalms in this class, but I'm going to take it for two classes today and tomorrow. We can dwell on the book of Psalms. So before I could start with this book, I want to know the personal experience of each and every one. So if you could share your personal uh, experience with the book of Psalms, which will help us to study this book. Brother Subu, anyone, just feel free, share your experience. Uh, for me, actually, it always boosts me. Whenever I actually uh, I meditate Psalms, even uh, whenever actually uh, I'm going out, always actually these verses actually uh, comes and uh, whenever whatever the actually verses I memorized, always uh, come back and encourage me. Even uh, the difficult times, uh, I cannot forget uh, these psalms actually uh, comfort me and uh, help me to overcome the challenges and the difficult situations. Even uh, I think uh, from the Bibles, uh, even during childhood, I memorize uh, psalms more than other scriptures. And uh, mm -hmm. I think actually this is a very similar for every uh, one. Actually, we memorize psalms more than other scriptures. So, the scriptures are very important still psalms are yeah. yes brother we agree with you those psalms were written many years before but then still the same words same uh, we can relate those words to our situation and we can raise it to god as a personal prayer by singing or reading that particular portion to god uh, brother lubega you would like to share Zeli. It's very uplifting going through the book of Psalm and it just gives me peace and joy as I meditate and ponder upon the goodness of God, you know, and all those mm -hmm. things. Uh -huh. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for each one of you all sharing. Uh, Okay, okay, sharing your experience, that's really great. Okay, we will start with our class. Okay, the uh, the book of Psalms, uh, well, um, the book of Psalms uh, is a collection. Uh, we see there are 150 chapters or the ancient poems or song psalms, okay? Uh, book one, book two, book three, book four, and book five, how it's been divided. So um, can I request each one of us, I need five members from a class to quickly take out the scriptures of the doxology so that we know each and every part of this book, that is the five parts, end with the doxology. Okay, so can I request Divya, Sid, uh, Georgia, Brother Lubega, and uh, and and Jeffina to take up these five scriptures. Okay, uh, we can start with Divya, chapter forty-one, verse thirteen. Sid, chapter seventy-two, verse eighteen and nineteen. Brother Lubega, chapter eighty-nine, verse fifty-two, and. And uh, Jeffina, chapter 106, verse 48. And who's the other person? Ms. Georgia, you said. Georgia, Georgia, uh, can you please take up Psalms 150, verse 6? Can I start? Yes, please. Psalms 41, 13. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and amen. Amen. The next person? Psalms 71. 72. Psalm 72, verse 18 to 19. Psalms 72, verses 18 to 19. Praise be to the Lord God of Israel, who alone does marvelous deeds. Praise be to his glorious name forever. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. Amen. 
Next. <clears throat> Psalms 89, verse 52. Blessed be the Lord forevermore. Amen and amen. Amen. Yes. Psalm 106, verse 48. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Let all the people say, Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Georgia. Psalms 150, verse 6. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. You see how beautifully it is well planned, which maybe we have not recognized it. So the book has been divided into five parts and each and every part has an ending, as a doxology at the end of these scriptures. So it is a Jewish tradition, the scribes topically, uh, you know, that's how it has been linked. And also uh, uh, it, it covers the Pentateuch, the Pentateuch from the book of Genesis till Deuteronomy. It covers, and we will also. I will also play a video which clearly portrays what are the uh, instances or uh, um, instance from the book of Pentateuch has been covered in the book of Psalms. I thought, yes, when we uh, uh, share it in the class, you know, there's ten percent of we learn, but when we uh, when we uh, project a visual, okay, visual along with what we teach. The learning is much more than what we only hear. So I thought I will also play a video with regards to that. Okay. The next we have authors. So how many authors do we have? We have mainly David. Yes. Many of us would have guessed that correctly because he has written the major of Psalms. And then we have Sons of Korah. Let me go to the next slide, which gives the details about the authors. So we have uh, 150 chapters in the book of Psalm, which is the Hebrew poem. Uh, we have uh, 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 three, six, seven. There are seven poets. Okay, David was has written most of the uh, uh, Psalms. Like 73 chapters have been written by David, and then we have uh, Asaph, who was a worship leader, uh, who was a worship leader who served along with David in his time. And he has written 12 Psalms. And uh, Asaph, a priest who also served as a worship leader in the ancient Israel along with King David, and he was able to write 12 Psalms. And the sons of Korah, uh, he was a glide of singers and uh, also a composer of music, and he has written uh, about 10 psalms. And then we have Eman. Uh, we call it um, him as Eman, or some pronounce it as uh, Haman. He was a wise man, a musician, and he was also an Ezraite, uh, uh, one of the sons of Korah, and was a founder of Korite Koya. We see that when we study the book of Second Chronicles. So he wrote Psalms 88. Now, there's a contemplation whether uh, um, Psalms, uh, uh, yeah, he, he wrote Psalms 88. Okay, and then um, Ethan was also a wise man in uh, uh, Solomon's kingdom. He was an Ezraite, probably a Levitical singer. So he wrote one of the Psalms, that is Psalms 89. And then we see Solomon, King Solomon, David's son, who wrote two Psalms, that is Psalms 72 and Psalms 127. And then we see uh, Moses, uh, a Psalm. one of the song of Moses has been recorded as Psalms 90. And then... Um, we see Ezra, the scribe, and the. Uh, then we see the anonymous. Okay, the fifty psalms are anonymous, and we don't know exactly who would the author be. But then they say uh, some of the psalms from that may be written by David, but then his name is not been mentioned. However, all these psalms, whoever has been written from the time of Moses till the exile time, have been compiled together by who? By Ezra and other scribes along. With Nehemiah, they compiled, they put together, and they uh, uh, made it. And they also say that Ezra would have also written some of the Psalms, which may be recorded as anonymous. Okay. 
yeah, when we say talk about these anonymous psalms, there are about 50 psalms that do not list the author. Uh, when they put together and we see uh, some of the psalms uh, because it sounds similar to David's psalms or the situation which David has been uh, 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 David, uh, David it has been recorded in the book of Chronicles or other parts of the book you know, where some of the situation that David has gone through and the psalms speak about so because his name is not given so uh, the authors are not very sure like uh, the scribes were not very sure would this psalm be written by David so they marked it as anonymous but still they have uh, uh, recorded or added into the book of Psalms uh, well uh, Psalms also talk about the crucifixion of Jesus it also talks about the Messiah uh, Psalms 22 is also known as the Messianic uh, Psalms which uh, begins with the word my God my God why have you forsaken me? Some of David's words, which also relates to Jesus. So uh, this they call it as the Messianic Psalm. Uh, Psalm. And also when we study the unique features, we would uh, come across the longest and the shortest book of the Psalm. So what do you think is the longest and the shortest book from the book of Psalms? Psalms 119 is the longest. Well, yes. And one. Yes. 17 is the shortest, I guess. Yes, you're right. You're right. Thanks, Divya. Correct. Um, well, uh, one more point I would like to bring it into our notice. Uh, when we see the authors, when we see the authors, uh, we see there was an urge urge among the uh, Ezra and Nehemiah and the other scribes in his time to bring the Psalms together, to, uh, to put, compile all the Psalms together. So what do you think uh, uh, would have... Uh, 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 would have made them to do that together. Nothing. There was an impression. I feel it. This is what I feel. There was an impression by the Holy Spirit to do that together so that today we will have the compiled version of Psalms, which is a blessing to each one of us. As uh, as you all shared in the class, like each one tend to read this book every day or share this book to everyone. Uh, uh, everyone or uh, as Sid said you know when he visits people place or sometimes when they start a conference or a meeting they tend to pick up the book of psalm and read it out loud so it's not only the tradition were there before but it is also now can we relate to the tradition that was there before when did we see people opening up the torah and read front of everyone and remind the scriptures what God has written for us. So the rebuilding of the temple. Um, yes, one of the instances that is we we went through in the book of uh, one of the book like one of the kings. Okay. Uh, like Ezra, Ezra was. Ezra also read it. Yes. yes. Okay. Moses compiled the uh, Pentateuch of the book, and we see Moses re uh, reinstate the law. He read the commandments of, uh, you know, how God brought the Israelites from the Egypt because the generation then may not know. So he had to retreat it. Okay, again, the book of Deuteronomy, Moses retreated, and then later we see for the new generation, Joshua read the law. And then later we see Solomon read it during the temple dedication. And then again in the second temple dedication, like what Divya shared it with us, Ezra read it. We see time and again people reading the scripture. What happens? They have been reminded the goodness of God. They have been reminded the love of God. They have been reminded that God is our redeemer despite the situation. Even in the exile, even in the exile, the main reason for Ezra, Nehemiah, and all the other scribes uh, put together, they, they worked day and night to compile these Psalms together. They didn't have the technology. They didn't have the facility what we have today. It was in a very hard way. They brought, they compiled the scriptures together. 
So Psalms was a very hard work put together. The effort that they put then is, uh, you know, has been uh, benefited even till date, even now, even now. And also God didn't stop for that. You see, everyone birthing, there's always a new song being birthed out of the book of Psalms. Not only then, David wrote it. But still those songs are made live. Even now people are able to take out the scriptures, take out the psalm and add a tune, new tune to it and sing and praise God. We see during the pandemic, uh, there was a song released by the Elevation Change. Um, can anyone guess what song is that? Class, which song was that released? which became very famous. Everyone sang in their own languages. Uh, every country started releasing that song in their own language and releasing it. Sid, go ahead, please. Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. Yes, the song of blessing. Very beautifully, Carrie Job sang it. Who is the singer? Did I say correctly? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Okay. Carry job. Yeah. She sang it so beautifully. You see the presence of God. That song was truly the song from heaven. It was an amazing tune. Every relic uh, spoke to us in that situation. And we also have our own album released, Untiring Love. Uh, it's not released during the pandemic, but much before that. It was taken, many songs were derived from the book of Psalms and it was released. It is, um, if you all can log into apcmusic.org, we can see some of the uh, Psalms have been released. There are about six songs and then uh, during Sometime last year, we released What Love Is This and Fresh Fire. So where do we get all this? From Psalms. There are many more singers have been published, released the new songs from Psalms. So Psalms plays a very vital role even now. And also, just like how Ezra and Nehemiah, we moved uh, to compile the scriptures so that... Uh, Shane and Shane worship team. I, I, I am not able to see your chat, Divya. Can you just speak out? As many yeah. songs based on the Psalms. Okay. Yeah. Shane and Shane worship team has many songs based on the Psalms. Okay. So just like how Ezra and Nehemiah and the other scribes had this urge in them to compile the songs or compile the letters and put it together and they've recorded, even now you see in our time with the technology that has been given uh, to minister to this generation uh, uh, who are advanced in the technology, God is moving in people's heart. Sometime back, maybe in 2012 or sometime then, uh, there was a director called uh, Darren Wilson Y'all can make a note. Darren Wilson released some of the documentaries based on the Holy Spirit, how the Holy Spirit moves uh, in this world. Uh, okay, there's a lot of comments where I'll not be able to see it. Okay. Okay, so what happened uh, during this time? How the Holy Spirit moves? So there are some people, God moves, God uh, places an impression on their heart to do something that can speak to the coming generation, to the present and to the coming generation. Just like how God moved in the scribes of those days uh, with writing and compiling the books together. And now in our generation, we see God is raising the directors to produce documents to produce movies. So Darren Wilson produced a, a documentary on uh, the finger of God, uh, uh, the father of lights, holy, uh, the Holy Ghost. And um, yes, there are some four to five documentaries that he has released. If you all go on the internet, you all can find out and you all can watch. We can be blessed with the move of the Holy Spirit. So he travels all around the world to experience the power of the Holy Spirit and he has documented. And recently, we also see uh, um, 
director Dallas, Dallas Jenkins, who is the producer, the director of The Chosen, how God has impressed him, amazing testimony that he's shared and how God has put an impression on his heart to produce the gospel movies, to bring Jesus alive from the scripture. Yes, there are a lot of movies released on the gospel, but what he's doing is something very different from what the others have done. He's taking us back to the actual places and giving us the experience. He is also opening up a visual to see, experience the love of Christ. And we see how God uh, is moving in and through him, the miracles that they go through, which is so true on the set, the experiencing the power of God. So yes, as we watch the episodes or the season, we should also see some of the on-set videos that they release, where they share the experience, the love of God, the miracle, what they go through, what they went through, so that we know that the God is moving even through us. Okay, um, uh, why I shared this is yes, God has placed the impression in our heart, just like how he has placed the impression on Ezra, Nehemiah and the other scribes to put the Psalms together. Uh, with this, we will move on to the next. And yes, there's a classification of Psalms as... Uh, as you all shared in the class, like there's a Psalms for every situation every circumstance that we go through there is a psalms where we can pick that psalm and read and meditate and it psalms does not only uh, talk about the praise and worship of god but also it records the lamentation it's so real it's so real even those days when people went through the situation even now we go through in our life so it is not much different it is the same that we could go through in our life and uh, uh, as we go through this psalms there is a word called tolta tolta it is a hebrew word and uh, this is a kind of revelation that i got this is something new that i learned as i was studying this book and i thought i will share it with us so um, this uh, this word called T O L A A T H Tolta is a Hebrew word for a uh, for a verb for a verb. It has been recorded in Psalms chapter twenty two verse six. Can one of us please turn to Psalms chapter twenty two verse six? Okay, due to time, I'll read. But I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men and despised by the people. So this worm, this word is also translated as scarlet 34 times in Psalms and worm as eight times and crimson as one. So what is it? What is that they are relating to a worm? So something new that I learned is... Um, Inside of this worm, when this worm has been crushed, uh, it produces a scarlet dye for clothing and the material. So they used to use this worm in those days. In those days, they used to use this worm to dye, to, to produce dye, to produce a scarlet or the crimson dye, a reddish color or a purplish, reddish purple color. This was the color they used to get when they crushed that worm. So the worm before its death would climb a tree, a big tree, and suspend itself from, uh, uh, it used to move from one branch to the other. And when it is moving from one branch to the other, there is a, uh, it, it produces a jelly, uh, something like how we, we would have seen snails move from one place to other. So it leaves a wet surface wherever it goes. There's a white transparent jelly that the snail will leave. But this worm used to produce a scarlet kind of gel when it moves. And what happens? This gel, uh, <clears throat> it has been exposed to the weather, to the sun, to the climate. And then this gel uh, slowly, uh, which is in the scarlet color, a scarlet stain would turn to become white and flaky. Okay, and then it will fly like a snow. So this reminded Isaiah, can we turn to the book of Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18?
Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18. Okay, it says, come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. So now do we understand the scripture from where the author has taken figuratively and written it here? So this is how the poets those days used to write the uh, write the psalms or any kind of poetic form relating to the situation, uh, relating to something very significant, and they will relate that to the situation in their life. And uh, yeah, with this, I would like to play a short video uh, uh, which showcases the complete psalm. Please give me a minute as I stop sharing this presentation and share the video. Talking about poetry, poets love design, masterfully use metaphor and symbolism. These poems invite us into an experience to ponder ideas slowly and from many angles. And the largest collection of poetry in the Bible is the book of Psalms. So that's what we're gonna look at here. Now the Israelites composed lots of poetry throughout their history. Yeah, poems were written by Israelite sages, kings, and... Before I could move ahead, are everyone able to listen? Is it audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, okay, yes, thank you. Thank you. We'll go ahead with the video. The prophets. Some poems were sung by choirs in the Jerusalem temple, while others were prayed by families at home. And over the centuries, the most important and widely read poems were compiled together to be read or sung on special occasions. And I'm familiar with books of poetry, a large collection, the greatest poems in one place, and I can read through and pick my favorites. But the Book of Psalms isn't that kind of collection. Here, each poem has been expertly crafted and then placed where it is for a reason, to create a storyline from the book's beginning to its end. The Psalms poetically retell the entire biblical story, and they invite you into a literary temple. A literary temple? Yeah, so the tabernacle and then later the temple in Jerusalem were where ancient Israelites went to meet with God. When you arrived, you would see art and imagery everywhere. You'd see priests performing rituals. You'd hear songs and prayers, all of it symbolically proclaiming that your God rules the world from this mountain and you're in his living room. So the temple was a place to be in God's presence and also to immerse yourself in the story of God's kingdom. Exactly. And so try to imagine how traumatic it was when the Babylonians invaded Jerusalem, plundered and burned the temple, and then took many Israelites into exile. Yeah, where can they go now to meet with God, to sing their story and say their prayers? That's where the book of Psalms comes in. It's a prayer book for exiles designed as a virtual temple. You enter the Psalms to meet with God and to hear the entire biblical story of God's kingdom sung back to you in poetry. Cool, but how does the Psalms do it? Let's start with the book's design. There are 150 poems broken up into five clear sections. At the beginning, there's been placed a short introduction, Psalms 1 and 2, which lay out the main themes of the whole book by reviewing the biblical storyline. Okay. Psalm 1 looks back to the Garden of Eden and its river of life. Yeah, God placed humanity in a garden temple. And here, humans decide to define good and evil on their own terms, and so are exiled from the garden. But the first psalm paints a portrait of hope about an upright human who delights in God's wisdom, which is called Torah or instruction. This person is like the tree of life in the garden temple. They eternally blossom because they're planted in the river of God's life. Yeah, that's beautiful. But who's it supposed to be? Well, remember that story in Genesis. After humanity's foolish rebellion, God made a promise. Oh, right. A future human, the seed of the woman who would come and defeat evil and restore the world. And that's what Psalm 2 is about. God's promise that a king would come from the line of David. He's called the Son of God and the Messiah. God appoints him to bring justice on human evil and to restore God's kingdom and peace over the nations. So Psalms 1 and 2 introduce all these main themes. Yes. And then the book develops those themes through the five sections. The first two explore the complicated story of David and his royal family. The third section focuses on the tragedy of Israel's exile and the downfall of David's royal line. But then the fourth and fifth sections rekindle the hope for the Messiah, a new temple, and God's kingdom on the other side of the exile. Then the book ends with a five-part conclusion, praising God for his faithfulness. 
cool. Now, nearly half of the Psalms are connected to one guy, King David, who God chose to rule Israel. Yes, David's story is really important in this book. He experienced many times of hardship, but he trusted God with radical faith. And in these poems, David shares his fears, confesses his failures, and offers thanks to his Redeemer. And he's constantly speaking of a deep longing to be in God's presence in the temple. But wait, David lived before the temple was even built. Exactly. This portrait of David, hoping and praying for God's kingdom and a future temple, it resembles the hopes of the later generations of the exiles. And so David's prayers could become theirs as well. David's like a prayer coach, giving us words for how to pray and how to discover God's presence in good times and bad. Exactly. There are 73 poems connected to David, but most of the rest come from later generations of biblical poets. And they have learned to pray and hope like David. And so the end result is the book of Psalms, designed as a virtual temple for all generations of God's people. This isn't a kind of book you just read once and put down. No, it's designed for a lifetime of slow rereading and reflection. These prayers and laments and songs of praise are meant to become our own. They're poems for exiles who are learning to live by God's wisdom and to seek God's justice in the world as they hope for the coming Messiah and the kingdom of God. Thank you. So there's a lot of learning from this, isn't it? I'll share the link for this video. It is available on YouTube. So please, you all can watch in your personal time and go through it. It's an amazing video with a lot of graphics and gives us an introduction to the whole book as well. So whatever we cover today, it's just an introduction of Psalms. And I will just go back to our presentation. Yes. So the book of Psalms, the Psalms are very prominent in the New Testament. In the New Testament, many scriptures have been quoted from the book of Psalms, like, um, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, it, uh, the Lord himself, when he uh, started to uh, started with his ministry on this earth, he started quoting uh, quoting Isaiah, quoting Isaiah 61, uh, saying that these are my words which I spoke to you while I was still with you. And all these things have been fulfilled in Luke 24, 44. And we also see many other Psalms have been quoted in the book of Matthew. And, um, you know, Psalms 22 has been quoted in the book of Matthew, chapter 27, 46, which says, uh, uh, when Jesus was on the cross, he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And later part, we also see in the New Testament where Peter and Paul also quotes from the book of Psalms. Peter quotes uh, from Psalm 6. Uh, about uh, Jesus must be raised from death. And also Paul writes, uh, 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 you know, in the book of Acts, chapter 13, verse 29 to 39, we see that how uh, uh, the Psalms need to be read in front of the congregation. He instructs Timothy to take up Psalms and read to the con congregation. The scripture must be read following the same pattern which was followed in the Old Testament because that was much important. And later we see the Psalms had a most prominent role in the history of the church in those ages like they used to take scriptures from the old testament and read it and emphasize saying that what was been said by the prophets have been fulfilled in jesus for the emphasis that uh, you know uh, they actually related saying that in the old testament see the prophets have written expecting for the messiah to come and this is the same messiah jesus is the son of god so they were relating what the prof, uh, prophets had prophesied, the uh, Jewish people were uh, waiting for the Messiah, and those fulfillment uh, uh, scriptures have been fulfilled in Jesus. So uh, the uh, the disciples or the apostles were actually teaching the people in uh, in the New Testament, the early church 
time through the Old Testament scriptures. And just like that, even we, the, the Jewish people, we see that they lived with the expectation for the Messiah to come. But we, yes, we have seen the expectation of them has been fulfilled in Jesus. Jesus came. He died on the cross as the Redeemer and he's back with his father seated on the right hand. But then we, just like the Old Testament people have been awaiting for the second coming of Jesus with the same kind of expectancy. We are carrying it within us and we see the psalm significantly contribute to the worship of the church today in the same way. Uh, yeah, and uh, uh, like how uh, still in our churches we see the songs have been birthed new through the book of Psalms. Yeah, uh, we see the Psalms, uh, many of this uh, speaks to us into our situation and also speaks for us when others read it in the church congregation or the songs when it's been, it speaks for us uh, out of depths. And we also see the Psalms are not only a prayer book, but a pattern of worship as well. And there's uh, something called literary type. Psalms gives us a wisdom. It shows how royal it was. And there are certain instances where they lamented and where we can apply it to our situation in our life. And there's the imprecatory Psalms. There's Thanksgiving Psalms, pilgrimage Psalms, enthronement. So we can read these books as per our need in our life so there are many unique features but there are few i wrote it but we can study it even tomorrow due to time it was uh, it is a worship hymn for the hebrew people and even today for us and uh, most of our traditional churches we see most of our books have been come out from psalms even i remember in my sunday school taking up one of the psalms and coming up with a tune for us they taught us how to come up with a tune and sing in your own tune and rejoice and praise God. And uh, it is uh, also some, the largest book of the Bible. We see 150 chapters is one of the largest book, but something that I feel is we don't uh, uh, feel tired reading this book. Instead, there is a joy. There is life in this book. When we read, you know, we can relate to a situation. We can cry out to God in our situation. We can rejoice uh, over um, Psalms, applying it to our situation. Uh, and we also see most of the Psalms when David has written it, he has written during his difficult time when he was running for his life from Saul and then from his son Absalom and then from the other kings. He was trying to hide in the caves for his life. But in all a situation, we see that he's raising a praise, just like how there's a song, raise a hallelujah to God. We see that literally uh, David raising a hallelujah to God, raising a praise to God. You know, Psalms 103, which is so famous, saying that, bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless his name. And do not forget all the things that I have and bless his name. So much of gratitude when he was running for his life from caves to another cave for his life along with his children and his family. And that time, you know, Psalm, uh, David praises God saying, Lord, I bless you for all the good things that you have done, for all the blessings that you have given. I bless you. There is no reason, you know, he comes to God and he complains or, you know, of his troubles and all. But we see the heart that he carried. That Maybe that's the one of the reasons that God says he is a man after my own heart. One thing we should know that uh, none of our situation are hid in front of God, but God knowing everything, you know. But no, despite everything, he's asking us to praise him. That's what even in the New Testament, Paul writes, praise God in all situations. Give thanks to him. We have to have this heart of gratitude despite a situation. So we need to carry the heart of David and uh, rest is all the same that we do. Uh, regarding the foreshadowing, we can study as we study the scriptures tomorrow of some of the uh, chapters of Psalm we will take and study. That time we can study the foreshadowing of uh, Psalm. So with this, we will end this class. Uh, anyone would like to share your views, your thoughts, you would like to add how Psalms has ministered to you, you can go ahead or something new that you learned from this class.
Yes, Brother Lubega, please go ahead. Without this class, how could I have known that Psalms 18 and 2 Samuel verse chapter 22 are the same? I wouldn't have known. A blessing. Thank you for the lesson. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Brother. Yes. Praise God. Anyone else? Zali, what was your learning? Can you hear me? Okay, as the time is up, we will end this class with a word of prayer. Can I request John to please lead us in prayer? Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, we so grateful for so grateful for revealing your mysteries to us, oh God. We thank yes. you for the book of Psalms as we learn today. Yes. Lord, we pray that we would be able to continue to read and understand your mysteries from your scriptures and to apply it in our lives, oh God. Help us to be a worshipper at all times, oh God. Yes, we thank Lord. you for this beautiful time you've given us. Uh, we bless each one of us, oh God. We thank yes, you for Lord. teaching us your ways. We give you all Amen. the glory and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. God bless. We can come with a lot of expectance tomorrow to read on this book of Psalms. Okay. Thank you. God bless. See you all. Have a blessed day.